Hello and welcome to another video. So I'm going to continue in the series of uh, de taking derivatives or finding derivatives from first principles, which means from scratch using the definition of the derivative. We're going to do that for cosecant x. Um, my other videos already covered sine, cosine, tangent, and I think I covered secant. So I have cosecant and cotangent. And remember that whatever I do is just using this definition and doing algebra. That's all I'm doing. By the way, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe to this channel. And if you need a private tutor remotely, because I know not everybody lives in Los Angeles like I do, um, just get in touch with me. Send me an email primenewtons at gmail.com and um, we might be able to work something out if you need help in any area of math um, as far as is, it's not super super high level you know just just the kind of level you need help with so calculus generally um, differential equations um, linear algebra whatever other aspects you need help with just let me know okay okay let's get into this so the first thing you want to do is just write out the function using x plus h. So we're going to go by the definition. We're going to say this is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of cosecant x plus h minus cosecant x divided by h. Okay, now what we know is cosecant means something. It is 1 over sine. So we're going to rewrite this as the limit as h goes to 0 of 1 over sine x plus h minus 1 over sine x divided by h. So by definition, we have gotten to the point where all we have to do is clean up the fraction within a fraction. Before we go on with that, what you want to do is the fastest way is, you can see there's a denominator here, there's a denominator here. You, just, you don't want to have a fraction within a fraction. So you want to multiply the top by these two and multiply the bottom by these two also. So what you're going to be doing in essence is saying that f prime of x will be equal to, I'm going to take this, 1 over sine x plus h minus 1 over sine x. Okay? Um, divided by, oh, there's a limit. Hey, don't forget the limit. Equals the limit as h goes to 0, okay? And then I'm going to multiply this by sine x plus h sine x. This is the fastest way to get rid of a fraction within a fraction. Just look for the denominators causing the problem in either the top or bottom. This one is not a fraction, this is a fraction. So you want to get rid of these denominators by multiplying it by the two or three denominators that you see. Just multiply everything by the same thing. And what you do to the top, you do to the bottom also. So we're going to multiply the bottom also by sine uh, x plus h times sine x. Okay, so now if we clean this up, what you're going to have is you multiply this by this, this is going to give you just sine x, and you multiply this by this, it's going to give you minus sine x plus h. So we still have this to be the limit as h goes to 0 of this times this leaves you with sine x on top, okay, and this times this gives you minus sine x plus h, okay, all divided by h times this, which will be, uh, we don't have to put this there, we can just write sine x plus h, sine x. Okay, now, remember, whenever you use the definition, the problem is usually not the denominator, so don't worry about the denominator, you want to do something to what's on top. For all of them, that's what happens. If you simplify the top, something is going to show up that's going to help you get rid of this h, which is really the problem, because as h, h goes to 0, it, you can't put 0 in the denominator of a rational expression. That's going to give you an undefined expression, which then causes the entire mission to fail. So see what we could do. What is the definition for the sum, for the sign of a sum? Remember, I want you to recall, okay, recall this. Okay, let's put this in a box here. Recall that sine A plus B, whenever you're adding two things and you take the sine of the angles, it's going to be 
sine A cosine B plus cosine A sine B. That's what you get. Okay, this is the, this is this one is from your trade class. So from this one, we can rewrite this part as equal to the limit as h goes to zero of sine x minus. You see this part is going to be sine x cosine h plus. Okay, see there's supposed to be a parenthesis here, so it should be plus um, cosine x sine h. Okay, now I'm going to get rid of this parenthesis and change the sign to a minus. So let's change this to a minus and then, okay, so we don't have to write a second line and this is all divided, okay, all divided by h times, uh, you don't have to do this, sine x plus h times sine x. Okay, what do we see that's easy to cope with here? Mm. By the way, you can break up each of these. What, what's common to all of these? The sine x, the sine x here. Mm, that's interesting. The sine x, the sine x. Let's factor the top, okay? So the top part can be written as the limit as h goes to zero of, if I factor out sine x from here, I'm going to have um, I'm just trying to see I'm gonna have <laughs> there's so many things I could do with this it's beautiful but let's factor out sine x we're gonna have sine x multiplied by 1 minus cosine h okay minus, I have cosine x sine h here. And I'm going to divide. Okay, so let me do this. Instead of writing this twice, I'm going to separate at this point and write the denominator for this, write the denominator for this. So what I'm going to have will be this divided by h sine x plus h sine x minus this also I'm going to write h times sine x plus h sine x. Okay, now let's do some limits. You see, I know that if I divide this by h and I take the limit as h goes to zero, this expression is going to become zero. Okay, remember that that I could actually take this limit, so I could say this is equal to, just watch what I'm going to do here. This is going to be the limit as h goes to 0 of, I'm going to take this portion first and write 1 minus cosine h over h, okay, multiplied by sine x over uh, sine x plus h times sine x. Okay, this is still the same expression as what you have on top. By limit laws, I can take these because this is continuous, because this is continuous, okay? I can multiply the limits. Take this limit separately, take this limit separately. But I know if I take this limit, this goes to zero. So this is equal to zero times whatever this is, everything here is going to become zero, okay? Whatever this quantity is, this is going to be one over, let's just cancel this out going to be 1 over sine x plus h, which doesn't matter anymore because it all goes to 0. So what I have left will be minus. Here I can write, I'm going to put the limit here too, the limit as h goes to 0 of, this is going to be sine h over h, okay, multiplied. I don't have enough space, but I want to write my answer next. Remember, this is already 0. Okay, minus, so if I write this this way, and I'm multiplying also by um, cosine x, so this is going to be cosine x over um, sine x plus h sine x. 
So from what you can see, you can see that as h goes to 0, this goes to 1, right? And I'm multiplying as h goes to 0, because I'm taking the limit of this two, this goes to 0. So you have cosine x over sine squared x, okay? So, and what is cosine over sine? That's actually cotangent. And what is 1 over sine? Because you're going to end up with this. So this is what you're going to end up with. You're going to end up with 1 over sine x times cosine x over sine x. This is the last line of your derivative f prime of x. So what do you have? You got 0 here. So everything here is 0. Where do I write this? Okay. Um, you know what? I can come back here and erase since we already have this at the beginning. So what I have here is f prime of x is going to be 0 minus 1 times this. And so let's write the expression out. 0 minus 1 times what is 1 over sine x? That's cosecant x. And what is cosine x over sine x? That's going to be uh, cotangent x. Okay, so our answer is negative cosecant x cotangent x. That is the derivative of cosecant x. So the part that's tricky is where you have to separate all the limits that you're taking here. Okay, using limit laws. And I hope you're able to learn a new trick or at least understand the concept behind the, the uh, derivative from first principle. See you in the next video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And DM me if you need any private tutoring if it's remote, unless you live in Los Angeles, then it will be in person if you want. Okay, see you in the next video. Don't stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.